So we're going to be doing factoring. Factoring with the linear expressions, Muhammad. Come on up. So factoring, if we talk about a factor, the idea of a factor, it's basically if you were to write a multiplication problem, you're going to write the term or expression as a product. And by the word product, we mean, you know, multiplying, right? Multiplication. So you're having to identify factors of multiplication. Now, when we talk about factors, a term GCF should come into mind. Who knows what we mean by GCF? What does that stand for? GCF, Cynthia? Greatest common, Greatest common factor. Very good. So that's something else that you want to make sure that you have in, in terms. If you didn't remember GCF, GCF basically means greatest common factor. So that's what we're going to be doing today is we're going to identify greatest common factors for expressions. So not just a number. So you guys are used to doing things like, oh, I've got a 12 and I've got a 16. So now I need to figure out what my greatest common factor of 12 and 16 is. Who knows what the greatest common factor for 12 and 16 would be? What do you think, J.D.? Two. Two is a factor, but is there a number that can that's larger than two that could go into both 12 and 16? Mia? Six can't go into 16. J.D.? Four. Four. Four happens to be the greatest common factor for 12 and 16 because... If you were to go ahead and do, okay, 12 divided by 4, that's going to equal what? 3. Okay. And then 16 divided by 4 is going to equal 4. And 3 and 4 don't have anything in common anymore except for a 1. So you've actually simplified it as far as you can. You know that the greatest common factor is 4. <laughs> Yeah, you guys did this a long time ago. You did this when you were first starting to learn about fractions even. We're going to take that concept, that idea, and apply it now with variables. So if I said you had 12x and 16y, it's still the same idea. 12x and 16y, you still have a greatest common factor of 4 because 12x divided by 4 is going to equal 3x. And 16y divided by 4 is going to equal 4y. So now you've got some variables or an expression that's involved. Now, with this concept, we actually have a neat little trick that utilizes the calculator. So you need to make sure you've got your calculators out. Oh, Nice you. Sorry. So you need the calculators because you're going to be using the fraction button. I'm going to show you guys a quick trick that will help you with this process. So if we take a look at a problem, let's say that I have the following expression. I've got 3x plus 9, and I want to go ahead and factor it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. My very first step is to set it up. as a fraction, where it's going to be the first term over the second term. And by terms, I mean this is my first term, this one is my second term. So if I set this up as a fraction, it's going to look like 3 over 9. And then I want to go ahead and hit equals. So right now, I want you guys to do that in your calculator. I want you to set up the fraction 3 over 9 and hit equal and tell me what you get. Chris, one third. Simple enough, you could probably even do it in your head, but it, if you hit equals, it'll say one third. So 3 over 9, you hit equals, it's going to say one third. Now, what that's going to mean, again, this is your first term. This is your second 
term. So my first term was 3x, and it now simplified to what? 1x. So it now is going to simplify to a 1x. My second term was a 9, but now it's simplified to a 3. Now, the only way that they could simplify to 1x plus 3 is we had to take a greatest common factor out. To find that greatest common factor, what do you get if you do 3 divided by the 1? What would you get? 3. And if you did 9 divided by the 3, what did you get? 3. So our greatest common factor here was 3. That's a value that's going to come outside. And that's your final answer. We're going to do it again. I know some, some people had the light bulb. Some people are still a little um, bit in the dark. Okay. So I'm going to repeat it one more time. I need you guys to make sure you're listening closely. You have your expression. You're going to take the first term and put it over the second term and make it a fraction, right? Just the numbers. So I, instead of 3x plus 9, I'm going to put 3 over 9 in my calculator and hit enter and it simplifies to one over three. So remember, the top was my first term. The bottom was my second term. So now instead of three X plus nine, the three simplified to a one, the nine simplified to a three. So it's now one X plus three. To figure out what it was that I had to pull out to get that one X plus three, all I do is take what was my original numbers and divide it by what my new numbers were. So if I take the numerators, three divided by one, I'm gonna get three. If I take the denominators, the nine divided by three, I get three. So that three right here is my greatest common factor. That's what I pulled out and put it here. And if you were to go ahead and do distributive property to check it, what's three times one? Three X. What's three times three? Nine. Allison. It should be if you because it, it'll be the same number. So whatever your numerators divide to equal, your denominator should be the same. Yeah, because because it has to be the same that you're simplifying both of them by. All right. So let me show you another one. Let me show you another one because some people still need a little bit more of a light bulb. OK, so let's take 24 X minus 30, 24x minus 30. So again, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna set it up as a fraction. So who can raise their hand, tell me, what's the fraction going to look like? Kingston, 24 over 30, good. So I'm gonna set this up as 24 over 30. Everybody type 24 over 30 into your calculator and hit enter. And what do you get when you enter it? JD? Four over five, very good. So 24 now became a four. So instead of 24 X, I'm going to put four X. 30 became a five. So instead of minus 30, I'm gonna put minus five. That's my inside. Now let's figure out what the greatest common factor was that we had to use to pull the numbers out. How do we figure out the greatest common factor here again, Jalen? Yep, that's it. We're going to divide 24 by 4, which gives us 6. If you want to double check, you could do 30 divided by 5. It also gives you 6. So your greatest common factor was 6. That's what's going to come onto the outside. Okay, you're going to do a few on your own, Kimberly. No matter what, the, yeah, it'll be the same for the top as it was for the bottom. Yeah. Shh. All right. Go ahead and do these three practice problems on your own.
Okay, Sydney, you okay? You okay? Oh, Jean, I, do you need me to show it to you again? Are you sure? Shh. All right. Now, remember, guys, the longer, the more you talk, the longer it takes you to do the practice problems, which means the less time that you have for your quiz today. The more you talk, the less time you have for your quiz. So try those three problems on your own. All right, who can tell me what they got for number three? Bryant, what'd you get? The whole thing, the whole thing. Just So just like we had before, we were like, oh, it's three times the quantity of X, you know, plus three. What's the whole thing? So the greatest common factor that's on the outside and then the expression on the inside. Mia? Very good. Three times three X minus 10. So if we set this up, we have nine over 30. 9 over 30 simplifies down to 3 over 10. So we know the expression becomes 3x minus 10. 3x minus 10. When we divided, we did 9 divided by 3, and we did 30 divided by 3. Both of them would come out to 3. So there's our greatest common factor. Our greatest common factor is 3, so that 3 comes on the outside. So this is your final answer, 3 times... 3x minus 10, okay? Then, who can tell me what they got for number four? Um, Trevor? Very good. 17, and then the quantity 5x plus 8. So if you take the 85 and you divide it by 136 or put it as a fraction over 136, it simplifies to 5 over 8. So there's your new expression. This becomes a 5x. This becomes plus 8. Then the greatest common factor, if you do 85 divided by 5 and you do 136 divided by Oops, sorry, yeah, divided by 8, then that's going to equal 17 for both of them. 
So 85 divided by the 5, 136 divided by the 8, it's going to come out. So this should have been divided by 10, my bad. Um, that's going to come out to 17. So there's your expression. 17 times the quantity, 5x plus 8. Last one, Abigail. 14x minus 17. Good. So we get 42 over 51. That's going to simplify to 14 over 17. So that means the expression is 14x minus 17. And then if you divide 42 divided by 14, 51 divided by 17, that's going to equal 3 for both of them. So your greatest common factor was 3 on the outside. And then you're done. Are there any questions? Yes. You're not supposed to have the decimals because greatest common factors are supposed to be whole values. But if they were ever to give you an expression and say, I want the greatest common factor to be a 2, and then your factors wind up becoming fractions because of that, that's a different story. That, that will do some practice on Monday in those cases. I have one problem I'm going to have you guys see. But when it comes to a quiz or a test, we're working with whole integer values, positive and negative whole numbers. Allison? Yes. Yes. All right, let me stop this.